信心百倍的打好这一场阻击战、总体战，打好这一场人民战争。The enemy was a new type of virus that had never been encountered before. 反复在烧，发热，发烧，全身胀痛的关节疼痛。因为这个病起病很隐蔽，病人根本就不知道他自己会得这个病。It's a life or death battle, a race against time. 你直接往前冲，没有后退的余地。我们是从十二月底。到现在没有一天休息的。They look like ordinary people dressed in white coats. In reality, they are soldiers. 不怕是不可能的，人之常情。他们一累了，忘记了怕。几十万的标本要采集啊，每一个标本都是护士面对被感染的这样一个风险。Confront the challenge, stand strong, never retreat. The initial battle proved to be a brutal encounter. On January the 22nd, more than 1,700 patients crowded into the 5th hospital in Wuhan, more than on any single day since it opened 97 years ago. The previous day, the hospital had been designated as one of the first in the city to treat patients suffering from fever. On December the 31st, the Wuhan Health Commission had reported 27 confirmed cases of viral pneumonia in the city. One month later, the number had multiplied 400 times, with cases spread across China, although most were concentrated in Wuhan. Wuhan Pulmonary Hospital was one of the first two hospitals in Wuhan to receive the new coronavirus patients. Hu Ming, its director of intensive care medicine, was in overall charge of their treatment. At the time, the term COVID-19 had yet to be coined, and there was no existing expertise for treating the mysterious illness. SARS or the coronavirus, you can say, you can go to the hospital, you have to go to the hospital, you have to go to the hospital, you have to go to the hospital. Hu Ming had gained considerable experience in treating patients during the SARS and H7N9 epidemics. This time, however, he was working in the dark and had no way of knowing how patients would respond. The virus was spreading. With more and more people falling victim, the medical workers had to employ all their knowledge and experience in fighting it.
they couldn't win every time. A patient having survived several resuscitation attempts might still succumb. To make matters worse, more and more doctors and nurses were being infected. As one of the first doctors to treat COVID-19, Hu Ming was often contacted by other doctors seeking his advice. Although he had dealt with life and death situations before, this time he was driven to tears. He was crying for a co-worker who had contracted COVID-19. Such fighters are not easily driven to tears, but this time the situation proved too much. In the early days of the battle against COVID-19, death was commonplace. More than 3,000 local medical workers in Wuhan and Hubei contracted the disease. Many of them wouldn't survive. The deaths of these ordinary heroes was mourned around the world. Lives were being lost, but the fight went on. I'm lending you my mom. This is what Chen Chi Fang wrote in a touching open letter to COVID-19 patients, encouraging them to overcome the disease and cheering on the army of doctors, including her grandfather and mother. Dr. Liu Fan, Chen's mother, is a pediatrician who specializes in treating respiratory and immune diseases among children. She volunteered to treat COVID-19 patients. Chi Fang's mother didn't come home for days on end. They could only say hello to each other via a video call. Sometimes, Chi Fang would wait for a whole day for her mother to reply. Dr. Liu Dunli, Chi Fang's grandfather, is 73 years old and retired. He volunteered to return to work at Changjiang Hospital. The medical workers, as they bravely fought the dangerous unknown coronavirus, made countless personal sacrifices. Dr. Zhang Zhan and her husband are both doctors. In a letter to Wuhan University's Renmin Hospital where she works, Dr. Zhang wrote, I am applying to be posted to the observation room so I can better screen patients. She went on, I haven't told my husband yet. I don't need to consult him because everywhere is a battlefield. You need to have a very experienced doctor to the doctors and nurses knew the risks they would be facing, but still they came to Wuhan from all over the country. 
86-year-old Dr. Dong Zongqi examined patients from his wheelchair. Some doctors and nurses showed exceptional courage by returning to work after recovering from COVID-19. On the COVID-19 battlefield, the soldiers revealed obvious signs of their dedication. The wounds covering their hands were caused by long hours of wearing rubber gloves and applying hand sanitizer many times a day. In order to preserve their precious protective suits, the doctors and nurses routinely wore diapers during their shifts. They applied band-aids to their faces to cover the wounds caused by wearing face masks. It was a brutal war, with ammunition in short supply right from the start. It was a struggle between life and death, which allowed no retreat. President Xi Jinping kept a close eye on the constantly changing developments in the epidemic situation. On January the 25th, at a meeting of the Politburo Standing Committee, he addressed the issues of manpower and supply shortages. He said that more medical staff should be dispatched urgently to where they were needed most. On February the 3rd, he reiterated the point, saying, resources for treatment, prevention, and protection must be sent to the front line in the battle against the epidemic, and priority should be given to meeting the needs of the medical staff and patients. Assistance poured in from all over the country. In less than a month, 330 medical teams comprising 42,000 medical professionals arrived in Hubei and Wuhan. Key resources, including medical masks, protective suits, test kits, and ventilators, were all produced at record speed and were immediately being delivered to Wuhan. It was a battle against the odds that brooked no delay. In response to the crisis, support came from all over the country. And so, teams of medical professionals began descending on Wuhan. Among them, 19,000 were specialists in intensive care medicine. They joined the front line in the battle, working alongside the local doctors and nurses. The arrival of some of the nation's leading medical professionals, numbering 2,300 doctors and nurses from all over the country, meant that the Guanggu campus of Wuhan's Tongji Hospital could start accepting more seriously ill patients. Of 
病人着急啊，放在外面就多一份感染的机会。桑桑小姐的感觉就是打仗，没什么话好说的。当时就觉得，就是觉得要冲上去了，炮火的连天的声音，就给人感觉你赶紧上去。我就坐在个角落里去写流程，写好以后，同济配的护长他马上变成那个这个文档什么东西到处贴，因为你这时候要完全培训大家掌握好不现实。不现怎么办？在这堵墙、这个角落做什么事我得贴出来，做两步。这里是手消毒，第二步脱手套，再走过去。这这个地方你要做什么事不然的话你永远记不住。然后再滴什么？每个篮子里面的东西都有，按照这个步骤来。The emergency intubation team became known as the Expendables. Intubation requires opening up a patient's airway. The process exposes the medical staff to the most direct contact with the deadly coronavirus. Critically ill patients often suffered from respiratory failure and hypoxemia resulting in dangerously low blood oxygen levels. They needed a tracheal intubation to stay alive. We After undergoing an intubation, this patient's blood oxygen level rose to 96%. Three days later, however, it dropped to a dangerously low 93%. Even being given pure oxygen failed to remedy the situation. 这说明肺的底子太差，它里边肺可能这个肺泡里头啊，都是有种胶冻啊或者水样的东西啊，在这个这个呼吸窘迫的这个炎症渗出很厉害。In the most critical cases, sudden multiple organ failure was a constant threat. Did the lack of any effective treatment for this new killer virus mean there would inevitably be more deaths? Experts in multiple medical fields work together to buy precious time for those affected. Doctors describe a cytokine storm, which is characterized by a range of symptoms as a powerful signal that the human body is pleading for help. In treating it, a severe immune reaction is initiated to fight the virus. However, the treatment can itself cause multiple organ failure. We have found that the treatment can reduce the effects of the virus in the past few years. We have found that the treatment can reduce the effects of the virus. The doctors caring for the critically ill Mr. Chung started a blood purifying treatment. He was also connected to an ECMO machine to provide essential life support. The intervention proved timely, and Mr. Chung's vital signs gradually steadied. The feared cytokine storm did not occur, and after a few days, the doctors removed him from the life support. Mr. Chung's lungs had started to work again, 
but the doctors still faced a race against time to halt the spread of COVID-19. The arrival of more medical staff and supplies and further exploration of new treatment approaches made it possible for many critically ill patients like Mr. Chung to recover. In the survivors, the immune system, given the opportunity to respond properly, helped to defeat the virus. Increase the recovery rate and lower the mortality rate. These aims were achieved through an intense battle against COVID-19. Because Late January and early February was the most punishing time in China's war on COVID-19, when the number of new cases in Hubei and Wuhan saw a rapid surge. Sorrow and grief swept Wuhan as people said goodbye to loved ones. A 90-year-old grandmother, a Mrs. Xu, expressed her anguish in a letter to her 64-year-old son. My dear boy, she wrote, please hold on and be strong. You'll defeat this disease. By now, every hospital bed in Wuhan was occupied. For four days and nights, Grandma Xu watched over her son. On the afternoon of February the 4th, her son was admitted to the ICU. Now she could do nothing to help him. So she borrowed a pen from a nurse and wrote a brief but heartwarming letter of encouragement to her son on a page of his test report. Tragically, the old lady's son passed away later that afternoon. The doctors were distraught, and the grief-stricken family members couldn't bear to tell the 90-year-old the sad news until much later. At the height of the pandemic, patients had to wait almost 10 days on average to be admitted to hospital. Due to the treatment delays, many people with mild symptoms became seriously ill. Clearly, the capacity of the hospitals had to be increased as a matter of the utmost urgency. Wuhan has some of the finest medical facilities in China. However, the city's intensive care units were equipped with fewer than 1,000 beds. Although efforts were made to increase capacity, they fell far short of what was needed. With the number of confirmed COVID-19 cases surging as the virus spread rapidly, people wondered how countless more deaths could be avoided. Wuhan resident Li Lina has become known online as the gong-ringing girl. At the end of January, she and her mother both contracted the coronavirus. She issued a desperate cry for help in the hope of finding a hospital bed. Though she didn't know it then, a month later, her unique way of pleading for help would become associated with the policy of 
science-based targeted measures for preventing and controlling the epidemic. By this time, the construction, conversion, and expansion of Wuhan's existing medical facilities were underway around the clock. Every possible avenue was being explored for increasing hospital capacities. In fighting the war against COVID-19, the celebrated China Speed was being deployed. In less than two weeks, Huoshanshan and Leishanshan hospitals were built. Jinying Tan Hospital increased its intensive care units from one to five. And at Tongji Hospital, people worked day and night for 48 hours straight to build new wards to accommodate additional hospital beds. Despite the increasing supply of beds, the city was still struggling to meet the surge in demand for hospital care. If infected people couldn't be admitted to hospital quickly, they couldn't receive the urgent medical treatment they needed. This, in turn, meant the risk remained that the epidemic could spiral out of control. In view of the battlefield situation, President Xi Jinping instructed that hospitalization and treatment must be provided to all those in need. The goal was to control the source of the infection and prevent the spread of the virus. In this beautiful city on the Yangtze River, millions of people were facing increasing hardship. So Liu and his family went into home quarantine and treated themselves. The temporary treatment centers brought renewed hope to the suffering city. Liu Meng and his father spent several days in one, undergoing treatment and recovering before finally being discharged. In a 35-day period, more than 12,000 COVID-19 patients with mild symptoms were treated in these purpose-built facilities. During the war against COVID-19, several key battles were decisive in securing overall victory. The temporary treatment centers were specially designed mobile medical facilities of a type first used in the wake of the Wenchuan earthquake in 2008. The unit was represented in the military parade celebrating the 70th anniversary of New China. However, they had to be converted to accommodate more beds. On February the 3rd, construction of the first three temporary treatment centers got underway. By the evening of February the 5th, the first patients were being moved in. 
非至善之法，但是没有比他更善的办法的时候，是解决收治的这样一个主要矛盾的现实之策。February the twelfth would prove to mark the peak of the epidemic, with almost thirteen and a half thousand new COVID-19 cases recorded in Wuhan. Ninety-two percent of them were first-time suspected cases identified by imaging testing, a technique that, by speeding up the diagnosis, allowed the patient to be quarantined much earlier. There was no time for delay in building the temporary treatment centers and providing the desperately needed additional hospital capacity. Thirty specialist facilities were hastily built, and 16 were put into immediate operation. Providing an additional 30,000 new beds, the number of hospitals treating COVID-19 patients increased from two to 86. The situation had been transformed from patients waiting for beds to beds waiting for patients. <laughs> Ms. Zhao, the mother of the now famous gong ringing girl, was checked into Wuhan's Hanyang Hospital which had an inpatient department specially equipped to handle COVID-19 patients. Her daughter, Li Lina, whose symptoms were mild, was admitted to a temporary treatment center. The experience of the mother and daughter and other patients reflected the transformation that had taken place since the adoption of President Xi Jinping's instruction that all those in need are hospitalized and treated. Amid the ongoing battle, President Xi emphasized two key issues. These were ensuring community-based epidemic prevention and control and guaranteeing that patients received treatment. Gradually, a three-tier system was established in Wuhan. Seriously and critically ill patients were admitted to designated hospitals. Those with mild symptoms were checked into temporary treatment centers. Communities assumed responsibility for screening fever patients who might be carriers and for assessing anyone who had come into close contact with confirmed or suspected cases. Experts from the World Health Organization have praised China for its leadership organization, mass mobilization, and actions during the COVID-19 crisis. They have stated that the country set an example for the rest of the world to follow in epidemic prevention and control. Before this outbreak began, Hubei had 137 isolation beds. Today, there's over 14,000 isolation beds. You tell me any other country in the world that could achieve that. As the war against the coronavirus progressed, the situation slowly began to improve. At the peak of the crisis, the Wuhan Emergency Center had received 15,000 calls a day. By late February, the figure had dropped to around 3,000. The number of hospital beds increased at a speed of 3,000 a day, the equivalent of 60 new level three hospitals being built within a month. By March the 5th, a total of over 15 million nucleic acid tests had been carried out. The central government policy of ensuring that all those in need are hospitalized, treated, or quarantined was being fully enforced. On the main battlefield, the worst was over. Still, the war raged on and China continued to make advances. Experts in various fields were conducting extensive research into ways of defeating the unseen enemy once and for all. On March the 3rd, the National Health Commission released the seventh edition of its Diagnosis and Treatment Protocol for COVID-19. For the first time, the term pathological changes was included in the text. On the evening of February the 13th, the family of a COVID-19 patient who had passed away at Jinyin Tan Hospital agreed to donate his body for medical research. So, the first ever autopsy could be carried out on someone who died of COVID-19. 
It started at 1.30 a.m. on February the 16th and lasted for almost three hours. It would provide vital insights into the mysterious killer coronavirus. Further autopsies revealed that COVID-19 impacted not only the lungs, but also multiple other organs, including the heart, spleen, liver, and kidneys. This discovery helped to shed light on the blind spots in treating the disease. Doctors could now prescribe the right medicine to target specific issues. In the 47 days from January the 16th to March the 3rd, the National Health Commission released seven versions of its diagnosis and treatment protocol for COVID-19. The document underwent regular updates as a deeper and better understanding of the coronavirus emerged. New drugs, new treatments, and new results and findings were added. The prone position exercises developed by Chiu Hai Bo helped to ease respiratory distress. They were first recommended in the fifth version of the diagnosis and treatment protocol. 在這個疾病的快速流行、快速爆發的時候,我們從形成一點經驗,馬上放到診療櫃房裡,實際上這是可能歷史上前所未有的。策略上要轉變,那就是實際上你急急救治,對對對,就關口前移,通俗一點就是
国际的规范，按照国内的法规，已经做了它的安全、有效、质量可控。The worst was over. From late February to mid-March, the number of new confirmed cases in Wuhan fell steadily. On March the 18th, it reached zero. Spring had come, bringing warmth to the city, but it was the doctors and nurses who had truly warmed people's hearts. Ah,我看你不知道他说的啊，过两天就跑了，你快接受病情的话，你说你过两天病就出院了，一定要对自己有信心，知道吗？我觉得病人，尤其是清醒的中人监护病房的患者，不舒适的症状、隔离的这样一
，他跟我说：“你们千里迢迢的过来，你们一定要保护好自己，你的家人还在等着你们。”我觉得不光是我们来武汉救济他们，他们也很一时时刻在温暖着我们。我们来到这儿真的是让武汉人民暖的了。武汉最美的不是樱花，是武汉人感恩的心。The gong ringing girl and her mother both recovered and returned home. For them, getting together for an ordinary home cooked dinner is the happiest of occasions. I 当时就是特别感动，就是能帮助我们的不只是我们的朋友，有很多我们甚至是不认识的人也在帮助我们，所以我们真的是非常的感恩。With more patients getting better by the day, the city of Wuhan itself was also recovering. On April the 26th, no new COVID-19 patients were admitted to hospital in Wuhan. In the war against the epidemic, the cumulative cure rate had risen steadily. By the end of April, it reached 92%. The rising number of deaths had been terrifying in the early days, but after a steady decline, one day it became zero. The overall strategy had been to put people and life first. The finest medical workers had been sent to fight the war, supported by the whole country. The policy of science-based prevention and treatment and targeted measures had guided practice on the ground. The medical professionals had worked tirelessly all these factors came together to achieve a relatively low death rate. The war against COVID-19 has been arduous and unprecedented. The battlefield extended across Wuhan, Hubei, and the whole of China. The country had been shaken to its core, but still it advanced bravely. You The bright light that had shone during the terrible war represented the burning desire of the people. The public health care system had triumphed, thanks to the contributions of millions of people. We are to the and When confronted with death, a soldier is not afraid. Heroes are those brave individuals among us who stand up to be counted. No one is born brave. Courage is ignited by a light in the heart. The white coat of the medics is the uniform of a soldier who is prepared to give his life to save the lives of others. The love and care in the hearts of these soldiers and their courage knows no bounds.
起一头，风也有，雨也有，风雨无阻，向前走。江。